Chapter 2, by way of brief review, I know I asked you last week if you're following the election, well, or what's going on. <laughs> it's been kind of a different year, hasn't it? A little bit. Um, the lesson is not on the election this morning. It's not on uh, uh, the differences between the two parties. It's not on really any of uh, that part, but if you've been paying any attention at all, it, it, it certainly has been a different, a different year. And uh, I mentioned last week, my first opportunity to vote was uh, Ronald Reagan. And it's changed a little bit since then. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's done change a little bit. But here, what do you think of this? Look with me here in First Timothy chapter 2. I can complain about a lot of things and I can bemoan a lot of things and I can I can uh, get in the flesh over things but let's look at this again in 1 Timothy 2 in verse 1 it says I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth Father thank you for your word God help us to be students of it. Help us this morning not just to be hearers but to be doers. Help us Father to be people of prayer. Help us to have thankful hearts. Help us to recognize Lord ultimately your hand in things. May you look in on the lesson this morning. May you grant us listening ears hearts. May uh, Christ Father be magnified and exalted in this class and the others. Ultimately Lord may you do the teaching. Uh, we need your help with the lesson. We need your help with, with application. And we need your help with just being good listeners, Lord. Yeah. We ask these things, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you look with me back to Romans chapter 13. These lessons from Romans 13 are not being going to be brought with the let's debate all the issues in America today and decide okay there are some hot button issues that we could certainly get into some real rough and tumble on and opinions on okay these lessons are foundational simply foundational you could you could sit back this morning and say well this really applies to a government that's that's not corrupt and, and, and is good and, and is not evil and, is, and has the good of the nation and has the Christian morals and this. But listen, I mentioned this last week. I believe personally, you may disagree with me, uh, first off, God knows what he's doing. Amen. But second of all, I believe often that you reap what you sow as a nation. Well, Brother Doug, no, God allows it to rain on the just and the unjust, okay? So we, we as Christians, you have to step back and say, well, what does the Word of God have to say regarding some of these things? You will find as we look in the Scriptures that God wants His children to do right whether, whether those around you are not doing right at all. God wants His children to do right. God wants His children to pray. God wants His children to be thankful whether the, whether the government or, the, or those in authority around you are not. So you're going to have questions about this. Is it what about this and what about that? What about, what about, what about, what about? Okay. Well, let's look at some of the scriptures just foundationally this morning by way of review again. If you're in Romans chapter 13, it says, look here in verse 1 here. Christian. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Why is that, Brother Doug? For there is no power but of God. 
The powers that be are ordained of God. But I thought I voted. Yeah, you're part of that process. I hope you are. Amen. But ultimately, there's a God in heaven who presides over the affairs of mankind, and that includes government. Amen. So as you look at the scriptures this morning, and perhaps you came in this morning and thinking, well, uh, I'm, I'm just down and out. I don't like anything that's going on around me and, and da, 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 da. But let's look at the scriptures foundation of this morning and see if we can't make some applications. And then you have to ask yourself before you leave today, and now let me ask you the question now, have you even bothered to pray for those in authority? No. Most of the time, no. I'll be honest. I'll be the first one. <laughs> Hands up. Amen. <laughs> first one. Amen. Be the first one to say, I can read the scripture. I can exhort you. I can encourage you. And then God says, yeah, what about yourself? Amen. So think with me this morning. Are we doing what we know we should be doing? Or are we sidestepping what God has clearly told his children because it's easier to complain? Now follow me here. Amen? Is it easier to complain? Oh yeah. But have I even bothered to pray? Well, you remember, God will have all men to be saved. Not just some. Not who I think's worthy. Amen? Look at these scriptures again here. So let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Why? For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is, look here, do that which is good, thou shalt have praise of the same. Well, Brother Doug, I'm not getting patted on the back. In fact, uh, Christianity, in my view, is being persecuted even more so for, being, for doing right. Bear with me. Amen. God didn't promise you a rose garden on this side of glory. Amen. I don't find that in the scriptures. What did the disciples have to go through? What did Paul have to go through? Who was in charge back then? Come on. Anybody? Thank you, brother. But on the, I'm thinking on a political and a horizontal, who was in charge ultimately back then? Not ultimately, but Rome. Now, you didn't just rebel against Rome if you were having a bad day. Right? Do I speak the truth? You didn't just decide to pick a fight with Rome. You, any of you are history buffs here today and have read anything about Rome, they put things down brutally. It wasn't politely put down. It was crushed. Well, yet think with me here just for a minute. Christianity flourished in spite of Rome. If you think back, amen? Christianity still, still kept on. The light was still burning. But you will not find in the scriptures where Christ tells his children or told to rebel against authority, to riot, to burn, to, to whatever. You don't see that. He told Peter to put up his sword. You with me here this morning? Now my, my old sin nature wants to pick up the sword. I probably have company here. Amen? The old nature says, Surely God, there's a line that when it gets crossed, God's people can do this and this and this and this. Yeah, God says, you're right. There is. You can pray, first of all. Amen. Yeah. You can be thankful for the, for the daily watch care that your Heavenly Father and the blessings of God each day that He provides you with, in spite of the circumstances. Amen. If you look at me in 1 Peter chapter 2. See, there is, a, there is a segment of fundamentalism, and I'm a fundamentalist most of the time, amen, that dearly loves, would dearly love a Bible lesson this morning railing on the government. Come on. There, I, think I call it the, getting the red meat out there, amen? But sometimes I have learned over the years and observations of fundamentalists that on one hand, the railing on the government is really neat, but cheating on your taxes... <gasps> yeah. Hello. 
Yeah, I don't get it some days. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to do this, but it's no, not okay. This, but it's okay to to do this. Say, so, wait a minute, something's not lining up here. Amen. God doesn't want it both ways, Christian. You have a driver's license. We talked about this last week. Why? It's state law. You're required to carry insurance. Why? It's probably state law. I'm not a law lawyer here. I don't know this that well. But there are simple things that, that God requires of God. That, that, that the ordinances and the, and the laws require of, of every citizen in this country today. Amen? Well, where do you cross that boundary? When's that? Just follow along. Look with me in First Peter, if you would please, chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they shall behold glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves, here it is again, to every ordinance of man, why? For the Lord's sake. Whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing he may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, Honor the king. You with me this morning? You with the Lord, I hope, for, if nothing else? Amen? Yeah. Just looking at the scriptures foundationally this morning. Amen? Look here, if you go back to Romans chapter 13. Well, Brother Doug, aren't you going to rail a little bit? Just bear with. Amen? Romans chapter 13. Again, back to verse number 4. It says here in verse 4, it says, For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. In simple terms, if you're going to go rob a bank, there's going to be consequences, or there should be. If you're going to commit murder, there's going to be consequences, or there should be. If you're not going to obey the law of the land, there's going to be consequences. For he bear not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, look here in verse 5, ye must needs be subject. Why? Not only for wrath, for the potential of... Okay? There's consequences. But also for conscience sake. You with me this morning? Amen? You say, what about that matter of the conscience? Look with, just go back with me to 1 Samuel, if you would, please. And you, you know the story with, with David and King Saul. I've always marveled at the, I guess if you could say self-control, but I believe David loved God for the most part and wanted to do what God wanted him to do. And I believe, look here in 1 Samuel chapter 6, this is the second time you're going to find that David has the opportunity to take care of King Saul. Now think about things as we read the scriptures here in 1 Samuel chapter 6 regarding David and King Saul. I'm sorry, 26. I'll say 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 6. David arose in verse 5 and came to the place where Saul had pitched. David beheld the place where Saul lay and Abner, the son of Ner, the captain of his host. And Saul lay in the trench and the people pitched round about him. David said to Himelech the Hittite, Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, brother to Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul to the camp? Abishai said, I will go down with thee. Now I like this guy Abishai. I, 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 you know, I need help. Anybody available? Abishai's hand shoots up. You know, let's think with me just for a minute here about Abishai. He's been observing this situation with Saul for a while and David. Right? And he's probably asked himself on more than one occasion, what is with David? Why is he not dealing with this? Would not each of us, come on now, would not each of us have seriously considered the matter and said, you know what, David, if you're not going to deal with this, we will. Yeah. 
uh, right? right? I'm sure this has crossed his mind more than once. Well, Abishai said, I'll go down with thee. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. David, if you don't get it, this is it. This is your opportunity again to take care of this headache. Okay? I will be the one to take care of it for you. Amen? Now, David said to Abishai, Look here. Destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said, Furthermore, as the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. The Lord should forbid that I should stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. But I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster and a cruise of water, and let us go. We're speaking a little bit about conscience and regarding those in authority. David had an opportunity to take care of, a, in some ways, uh, kind of a major headache here. He, he really did. This wasn't the first time. He had cut off a piece of Saul's robe earlier. Do you remember that reference? I think it's uh, the 24th chapter. But it smote his heart. If you read that the verse, it smote his heart that he had even done that. So if you go back to Romans 13, think about this matter of conscience, not only for, the, for wrath. Remember what it said here? Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Yeah, God speak in your heart and say, hey, that's not right. Hey, don't do that. Leave that alone. I'll deal with it in my own timing. You do right. And I'll take care of this as I see fit, when I see fit. If you're back in Romans 13 again, look, look at here. In verse number 6, for for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Do you think it's right to pay your taxes? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've got a yes. Yeah, okay. Well, how come? Why? It's not complicated. Why? It's the law. Right? Do you, did you remember when Christ addressed this issue? Does anybody recall that? Amen? Yeah? Look with me in Matthew, if you would, chapter 22. Now think with me here just for a minute. We're talking about taxes, which is a real, real broad here this morning. But I could ask you the same question about something else. You say, well, no, that's not. But look with me in Matthew chapter 22. Why do I ask about taxes? Because I know some tax evaders that claim to be Christian. Yeah? Come on. I do. Yeah, I know folks that claim to be Christian don't believe it's, it's uh, something they should do. No, not going to do it. Because uh, the government's requiring it, so I'm not going to do it. Oh, well, hold on just a minute. Look with me in Matthew chapter 22. You say, well, brother, this is not that big of a deal. You'd be surprised with some folks. You'd be, you'd be surprised. Matthew chapter 22, verse 15 and then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. They sent out unto him their disciples with Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God. Look how they're wording this. The way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They send unto him Caesar's. 
Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Now I want you to think with me just for a minute here. Look at that last part of that verse, of verse 21. It says, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. I jotted down just a few thoughts here about responsibility of being a citizen of this country. One, I put down here, and we've talked about it, pay your taxes. That's the law of the land. I've got a general note here. As best you can, obey the law of the land. <laughs> this may be a tougher one for us to swallow. Respect the office. You with me? Respect the office. Those of you that have managers or higher-ups, I'll take this down to... Uh, you may not always like your manager or respect your manager, but res you respect the office. Does that make sense? You may not respect those in political positions in Texas or broader nationally, but respect the office. You may not respect the man or the woman in office, but respect the office as a citizen of this country. Now I put down, let's, let's take it to another level here, and that's God's level. You'll notice what that verse said here. It says, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. What can you think of some things that are God's this morning? Come on, it's okay, it's not a trick question. Christ split this up, didn't he? Yeah. That's an, that's an interesting answer. That's amazing. That's like, wow. Because when they had heard these th words, they marveled and they left him and went their way. <laughs> there wasn't anything else to say about it. Let's think about, well, see, we get wrapped up sometimes. Fundamentalists, are you listening? About the, th the laws of the land and this and that and our responsibility as citizens of this country. But are we, are we as concerned about the responsibilities as citizens of heaven this morning? Now follow me here just for a minute here. Not only does God want you to take care of things that are, are to be rendered to Caesar, but he also wants things that are to be rendered to him. One of the first thoughts that came to mind here, I, you, you got to talk about money, Brother Doug, don't you? Our tithes and offerings are God's. Amen. Look with me in Malachi. I, I, I hate, to, hate to poke, but come on. Malachi... Listen, it's God's to begin with, so let's don't, don't not be confused about things here. On verse number 8, it says, Will a man rob God? Huh. Yet ye have robbed me. It's Malachi 3 8. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation, bringing ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now here with, saith the Lord, host, if I will not open you to the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen, Amen brother Doug. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, but render unto God that which is his. And will a Christian rob God? How fast and how long? Amen. If that's a weak area of your life, I'll challenge you to get it right. Well, I've got a disagreement with that matter of tithing, brother. Well, that's another discussion, a whole other lesson. How about this one? How about our worship? Yeah, amen. Very quickly here. How about our love? Yeah. How about our obedience? How about our bodies? You'll find there's scriptures for each of these, these that I've just talked about. Amen? Something to think about. Now, in closing this morning, is there ever a time to go against the laws of the land? Creak, the door opens. All oh, okay. Here it is. Amen. We'll be here for an hour now. No, just bear with me, amen? Is there a time? If the order came down from the government this week that all Bible messages must be run through the government for approval before being allowed to be brought Sunday mornings, hello, what would you do? Amen?
<laughs> be a crowded jail. <laughs> Well, come on now. This is practical Bible. This is a practical Bible question or an elementary question because we're living in troubling times. And that's a very real potential. Do yeah. you think I'm kidding you? Things have changed in the last 30 years quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. So ask yourself the question, what would you do if you were the pastor of the church? And the government said, well, you're no longer allowed to preach on. How about just sin in general? Amen. Because you're liable to offend somebody. Yeah. I need preaching on sin. Amen. Whether I get offended or not, I need Bible preaching. Yeah. Okay. But not everybody's going to agree with that. Do you remember in the book of Acts in closing this morning? Yeah. Got to stir it up and then quit, right? Acts chapter 5. Acts 5.25, Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple. And what's worse, they're teaching the people. Yeah. <gasps> then went the captain with the officers and brought them without... What? Would you, Ben, would you come over here, please? Quickly, quickly. You can kind of see what's going on here. For they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. When they had brought them, they set them before the consul, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. And boy, does that open a door, doesn't it? Amen? Right? But think about the lesson this morning. I want you to look at this, not now, we're out of time. But you take some time and go back to the book of Daniel and look at the life of Daniel, specifically in chapters 3 and chapter 6. You'll find that Daniel did right in spite of the circumstances. Amen. He didn't quit. But he did right in spite of the circumstances. But you'll not find... In these scriptures, even in Acts here, where Peter says, again, we ought to obey God rather than men, so take up arms. We're starting a riot this afternoon. Yeah. You do not see that. Amen? And Christ did not endorse that. Okay? You do what's right. Preaching the word of God is right. Amen? Whether man thinks so or not. You do as, as God leads you in the air of doing right. God sets up and ordains government and God allows circumstances often. I think we're reaping what we sow in America today. Amen? But if God's people, self here, amen, if God's people can't do right, amen, and you look at what we're to be rendering unto God, amen, come on, come now. Let's, let's reason together about some things. Amen? Are, there, are, we, are we simply, are we, do, are we tithing? Are we giving God our worship, our love, ourselves? Amen? Are we, ded, are, are we dedicated to Christ this morning? Is our affection on things above? You have to ask these selves these questions. Well, I'm railing over here about paying taxes. Am I robbing God over here on the tithe and offering? Amen. Let's stand. We'll be dismissed with a word of prayer. Rile everybody up and then quickly leave. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your word. God, help us, Lord, to do right. Amen. In spite of the circumstances, we know, Father, that you're aware of everything about everything going on. And about each of us individually, the very hair of our head are numbered. You haven't missed a thing, and we're thankful for that. Amen. We pray for your help. We pray for your discernment. We pray for wisdom, Lord. Help us to do right in spite of the times and the circumstances. Yes. Most important, that Christ will be glorified in and through each of our lives. May your hand be on our pastor. God, May the word be brought with power, oh, with your strength and might, and your charity, Lord. In your mercy and grace, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you to know and do his will today. God bless you.